Hello and welcome to the print interviews. I'm Ishadrita Lairi and today we have joining us a very special person. And the reason I call him special is because uh, minutes before this interview, he, unlike most politicians I know or definitely most politicians I know in the Congress, said that he's the resident expert of the CBI and the ED in the Congress party. Uh, Mr. Karthi Chidambaram, thank you so much for speaking to us. Hello. Uh, before we get into the serious stuff, there's been an FIR that uh, the CBI filed against you last month. Uh, you were, you know, called for summoning by the ED after that. There were raids in your house. And throughout this entire process, what I noticed was on the day that there were raids on your house, you were playing Wordle. <laughs> on the, two days after that, you were in Lyon and you put out a picture from in front, in front of the Interpol office. On the day that you were coming back to India, you put, a, you put up a picture of a Chinese restaurant because the, the case is about, you know, giving bribes for Chinese nationals, etc. So, how are you so jolly through all of this? Because... <laughs> See this. This whole thing is absurd. I mean, this whole charge, allegations are all completely absurd. And the only way I can maintain some sense of uh, balance is by calling out this absurdity. Uh, I have been raided six times since 2015 by both the ED and the uh, CBI. Hmm. And uh, they keep coming up with outlandish charges against me. And I know hmm. that none of these charges are going to stand in court. Mm. Uh, some of them won't even make it to the charge stage. But uh, these agencies, because of political compulsions, are indulging in, in harassment. Mm. Because my father is the principal critic of the government. Mm. Uh, in order to get to him, I think uh, they have to go through me. And so they harass me. And once, because it's, it's reached the point where only I have to laugh at the whole process. Mm. I mean, what else can I say? If, has anybody been raided six times in India? I mean, what do you raid a person repeatedly and what do you find? I don't think even uh, terrorists in the radar of NIA are raided six times. I mean, uh, every time they come away and take away a computer or a phone from me. In fact, I've stopped buying uh, computers because I can't afford to, uh, you know, give a computer away to the ED and the CBI and not get it back and keep replacing it. Uh, so it's, it's in order to, uh, yeah, in a way I am sort of, Mocking them. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm not denying that. Uh, only by saying that I'm carrying on with my daily routine and I mocking play. them, or do you think humor is the best way for you to deal with something? It's like also this? I have to laugh at it. What else can I do? Because uh, you know, the, there are the institutions which are supposed to uh, make sure that these kind of excesses don't happen are not really stepping in enough. And so the only other way I can deal with it is, is by uh, is by by humor. And you know, why would I? you know, disrupt my daily routine because this is happening, because this is happening so regularly. So I continue playing Wordle. I keep putting out uh, my my tweets. I uh, and, you know, and, and I couldn't resist taking a picture outside the Interpol <laughs> office because uh, that's when this whole story was breaking out in India. And I was by chance in Lyon and Inter Interpol is headquartered there. And uh, I, I just couldn't resist that picture. And um, putting out a Chinese restaurant, you know. To I believe me. there's, I believe there's something you got for your investigating officer from Lyon. <laughs> I gave him a postcard, and I came here. I, you gave uh, him a postcard from Lyon. I gave him a postcard from okay. Lyon. I mean, I, I wanted to post it, but because I was coming back immediately, I carried it in my hand, and, I, and, and the first day when the CBI called me, I handed over a signed postcard from Lyon, and I told him this is a small souvenir <laughs> I got from him from there. So. I mean, even putting out the Chinese restaurant, I mean, to link me with uh, with visas for Chinese nationals is absurd. I mean, I've never ever facilitated the uh, the, uh, the the visa process of uh, of one Chinese mm. national, and to accuse me of 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 of, of, of you know helping. I think 250 plus Chinese nationals is absurd. So I just couldn't resist. I mean, as I was taking off from Heathrow, I saw a Chinese restaurant, so I took a picture of the Chinese restaurant and put it out. So what else can I do? <laughs> So, Karthi, this conversation we are having now, it's significant because today you were a part of a protest with Mr. Rahul Gandhi, who, along with his mother, who's the Congress President, Mr. Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, has been called by the ED for questioning. And this is for the National Herald case. And the party stance has been that this too is a politically motivated case. There's not much meat in the case. And I've been speaking to people across the party. And one thing that they say over and over again is that with cases like these with the national herald or with the one the INX media case which involved both you and your father or the one that was registered against you recently they say that the in in these cases especially 
for the when it's against opposition parties the process is the punishment correct so um, for example with this uh, the reason i was told by some congress pa uh, party leaders that the reason that there was a huge protest today and all of you guys came out in support of rahul gandhi is because of that because the first time um, you know you appeared in front of the ed or the cbi people like us the media social media everyone's talking about it maybe the second time also people are going to talk about it but then it goes on for years and then no one is following up no one really knows what's really happening but i'm sure you are still you know doing your rounds of the courts and you're you know you're you're you know seeking special permissions and in that regard um, there's a statement that you put out when you were coming back and you said that your movement has been terribly restricted your associates are being harassed and there's you know i mean there was not much emotion there it was a, it was a rather you know it was in the same tone as your tweets were but you made this really emotional statement where you said that even to visit your daughter in university you have to take permission from the court so i would want to know a little bit about that both with inx media and with this case what has it been like since these cases were uh, you know were kind of brought up see let's talk about the national herald case you know the ed is a taken jurisdiction over the case without even having an fir registered anywhere else you see the ed can only draw its powers if there is an fir by another investigating agency there is no fir by any other investigating agency in this country in the national herald case but the mm. ed seems to have assumed jurisdiction mm. and uh, they are uh, you know applying the, uh, the pmla act when there has been absolutely no transactions it's only uh, an accounting entries um, between a holding company and subsidiary companies so you know it's a complete misuse of the system hmm. and uh, this misuse has to be only called out by the judiciary but until that's called out uh, in the garb of investigations the 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 ed can summon all and sundry make life miserable uh, make you run around the courts uh, impose restrictions on your travel uh, um, seek all kinds of information uh, even though they might they're not directly uh, connected to the investigation and sort of basically troll your life go go through every aspect of your life and to and to connect unconnected dots and to and and give this selective media leaks and every time they say grilling i mean i i laugh at it i mean i've been through this process at least 30 times with ed there is there is a, hardly any grilling in fact i've gone on record with the media saying that every time i'm called by the ed or cbi they should actually live telecast my questioning but then you will you will understand no, but how then, absurd then what the do you do process. for eight hours six hours if it's not grilling we just sit around we sit around most of the time there's nothing to ask what do you ask uh, when there is nothing to ask i mean you run out of uh, things to ask if that even remotely relevant so you go into irrelevant things and you run out of irrelevant things too in fact i i i would urge again the ed and the cbi the next time they call me and i'm sure they will call me again and i'm sure they'll find some pretext to call me again they should live telecast my the 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 the, the so called questioning or grilling so it, it these agencies need to be called out but unfortunately so are you saying that the summons that you go that you appear for there's really not much asked in these summons there's nothing much asked which is of substance which is even rela related to the allegation it's a, it's a fishing and roving inquiry in my case what they're trying to do is a reverse investigation normally what you do you would find a dead body and then investigate whether the cause of death was unnatural if it was unnatural was it um, you know murder or accident and then try to link uh, find the the persons or or or, or incidents which were which caused the death in my mm -hmm. case is other way around they come to me and they try to link me to some some decision of the government of india by mm -hmm. by trolling through um, the emails of all my colleagues by mm -hmm. by questioning all my colleagues and finding some tenuous link with somebody who might have had uh, some decision taken by the government of india and to link those two so what they're doing with me is a reverse investigation they're not really mm -hmm. doing an investigation of an of an erroneous or a malified decision of the government of india mm -hmm. and then finding out who was responsible for the erroneous or malified decision and then going uh, going into the investigation process mm -hmm. here they're coming to me and trying to link me to some decision of the government of india and to trying to find a, a crime in it so that's why they will get stuck they will mm -hmm. get stuck eventually in this process but the process is not swift 
it is going to take years. I mean, we are in 2022 and my first raid was on the 1st of December yeah. 2015. I've had multiple summons. I've had, uh, I've been in, uh, in a, as a guest of the, uh, the government of India for 23 days. And uh, we, we, we're not going to end this process. And there is no finality to uh, to any investigation. You could you could investigate until the cows come home. Hmm. You could, you could in the guard of investigation, you could say you're writing to international uh, agencies, you're writing to other countries, you're writing to financial institutions, you call people who are even even sort of tenuously linked to you going through their financial records and then trying to connect something so you're you it's it's if you actually get into the meat of it if you you will realize that they're trying to not just connect unconnected dots they're trying to connect non-existent dots hmm. and that's exactly what they will do in the, in the national herald case too i mean this will be the summons will be followed by 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 seeking more information there'll never really be a charge sheet there'll never hmm. really be a trial but this process will go on there's no finality and there is no officer in these agencies who has the courage of conviction to say there is no case there's nothing to proceed they never would write that because the political establishment would not allow them to write that as i said would you just keep encouraging them to keep on trolling and keep on harassing so the process is the punishment. The process is the, the the tool for harassment and all of us are going through it. And if you look at even the allegations against me, one allegation is based on a person who's accused of murder who is now recently on bail. And the other allegation is, 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 is apparently an act of a person who's deceased who the CBI has never examined. So the first so, person is Indrani Mukherjee. Indrani Mukherjee. The other person is some Mr. Morarka who I've never heard of. Mm. I, I've, I don't know these people. I've never met these people. I've had no communication with them. And when I say this, the agencies have nothing to show uh, to the contrary of what I'm stating. So, so that's why they've never been able to go to court and actually progress with the cases. So can I ask you something here? And this is just for the ordinary viewer to understand, right? And from their perspective, so when you say this is a witch hunt, so for the normal layman, like you're a privileged person, you're the son of a former home and union minister. So if you could explain to us, how do these rounds of the court, the fact that there's this case that's going on against you since 2015, you've been jailed in between. Now you have to keep going to court. There are summons again and again. Now there's a new case. So when you say the process is the punishment, can you explain to us how it is a punishment See, what for, is, for someone like you? Yeah, for someone so, so, who's, so, so say, for example, in the PMLA, it's, it's a question of transactions. So they will say anybody who's transacted with me technically can be summoned. So they have summoned my web designer. They have uh, raided my secretary. They have called the architect of my mother-in-law. So there is no end. Anybody with whom you had a financial transaction could technically be roped into this. So what does this do? If you if you start calling people who you do business with 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 associates, they all get spooked. I mean, they don't have the political wherewithal, and they have, don't have the. I mean, since these cases have people who do business with you, kind of absolutely shown some kind of apprehension. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, anybody would. Why would they want to be drawn into uh, into the, the to this dragnet? Why would they want to expose themselves and their businesses and their families and their transactions because they are associated with me? Many people would be spooked. I don't blame them for getting spooked, but that's 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 the entire design of this whole process is to spook everybody around you. I mean, you you pick up uh, associates, so you pick up employees and consultants, so people below them would also feel apprehensive of working with you. And if you, I mean, if you can summon my mother-in-law's architect. I mean, I don't know who you can't summon anymore. You, the next day, I mean, the next day, probably call the the washerman who who starches my uh, my my, my khadi clothes, which I wear uh, every day. Because technically, there is a financial transaction between the the, the washerman and me. So as you could say, the proceeds of crime have flowed from me to him and you could actually summon him and you could ask him how many dhotis and how many shirts I, I give for laundry every week. I mean, that would be one of the questions the ED would ask. I mean, that's how absurd these investigations go. And uh, there is no end to it. There is no finality to it. And there is no uh, timeline to it. And courts um, uh, don't uh, give them a timeline to complete it. They can always come to court and say investigation is continuing and it can continue for, uh, for, for years and years to come. So, so, so you'd never really go through this legal process of coming to a conclusion because mm. the investigating agencies will always come to court and say, mm. oh, we need more time to investigate. And more mm. time to investigate means summon more people, perhaps raid more people, perhaps mm. even arrest more people, only for a brief period. They can't hold mm. you on for a very long time, but briefly, but, but spook everybody around, create this big aura of as if some great criminality has happened. I mean, do reputational damage create all kinds of myths about you. I mean, I mean, the kind of stories which go on the internet about me, I mean, it's, 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 it's laughable. I mean, there is What's one politician. What's the worst you've heard? 
One is that we cultivate uh, gobi, which I think is cauliflower, in, in our rooftop. And we claim huge amounts of income as uh, exempt agricultural income. And the other one is that I have uh, undisclosed bank accounts all over the world. And the total amount of money is 1,20,000 crores, which, which probably puts me in the league of, of Jeff Bezos, but probably <laughs> not in the same league as Elon Musk now. I mean, with a depreciating rupee, I mean, I don't know where I stand. But Is this how you answer all your questions to the CBI? <laughs> questions are asked to me with, uh, with, with outlandish questions will only get humorous replies. What else can I say? I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I, it's, it's, it's and then every now and then they give the sealed envelopes to the, the courts, which God only knows what's in them. I mean, not one court has taken it seriously, but every now and then in every proceeding of mine, sealed envelopes are given by the government. I mean, they say I have undisclosed properties in the world or 25 properties in one 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 instance actually this I, I saw a statement said I had 14 properties in in or other 13 properties in 14 countries I think one must have been in the border that's the only way 13 <laughs> properties can be in 14 countries so, I mean it's it's all kinds of these outlandish stories as well and and I, I don't blame people people read uh, you know snippets about you and they, they form an, uh, an opinion about you I mean if anybody who googles me I, I don't think it's going to come out with a, with a, with a, with a good feeling about me <laughs> they probably have uh, have a very negative image about me but but, the, but what do I do I mean I can't erase these things from the internet that's as I said, this is all the fallout from this unending, um, open-ended uh, investigation. To travel abroad, they have LOCs against you or the conditions of, of your bail is because you need to seek permission. So every time I travel abroad, my daughter studies abroad, I have business abroad, I have to give specific itinerary, I have to open out to the world about my travel. I mean, it's, it's a serious invasion of privacy, but I have to go through it. I have to give you, you the name of the place in which I stay, I have to give the airline I take, the time of my flights. And this is every time Every you single abroad. time I travel. This has been and the case. Since, 2000, since 2017. For five years, I've been doing this. Okay. How has this affected your family? Obviously, it affects Because you have a young daughter. Your father, of course, yeah. seasoned politician. I'm sure he's used to all of this, but he's 78. Um, your wife, your... I mean, how does this affect all it of them? It obviously affects everybody. My daughter's seen this... I mean, she's 21 now and the first trade happened when she was, what, 14. So she's gone through, I mean, once it was during her exams and once it was during her admission process to Cambridge, these, these raids have happened. So, I mean, people have come into a room, gone through her uh, computers and then every time she wa I have to go to travel, I have to make applications in advance or even for her interview to go. I wanted to accompany her to the interview to the university. I had to give them the reason why I was going there. I mean, it's, 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 it's a serious violation of one's uh, privacy and uh, liberty. But uh, of course, it affects people. I mean, I can't travel at will. I can't uh, go where I want to go. I have to tell everybody where I'm going. It's, 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 that's the process. I mean, I, mean, I, I mean, for the world of me, I can't understand what the, these investigations have anything to do with my current travel. But, but that's the rule of the game. So... You know, this is a pattern that we see, uh, especially with opposition leaders. And uh, there are people within your own party, like Mr. D.K. Shivkumar, for example, who's also embroiled in a similar case. Uh, Mr. Ajay, Ajay Lalu, not with the CBI or ED, but he was in jail for over a month because the UP government decided to take action against him. Now, when this happens, as the opposition in the country, how do you combat it? Because that is important. Because, you know, we were just discussing how the first summon, the second summon, and that's it. It falls out of the media limelight. But as you said, it's all still on the internet. So whenever people Google you, it's, it's there for the world to see. But even if, for example, your name is cleared, it will probably not get as much of the publicity as you know you being summoned would. So then how does the opposition deal with it? Because then, I mean, if this is indeed politically motivated, you can have case after case after case against you. And what do you do? How do you stop? And what is, I mean, from the Congress party's perspective, how do you think that the party should be approaching this? See, we have to really keep highlighting this to the people that this is how this government functions. I mean, what is happening to us is unfortunate and what is happening to us is unfair. But what is happening to other people is even more unfair. Look at the kind of demolitions which are happening with the bulldozers. I mean, at least we have the wherewithal to fight it. We have the wherewithal to come and tell our story to the media. But these people whose houses are getting demolished because somebody participated in a protest from the family. This is like collective punishment for disproportionate collective punishment for something which is not even proven. This, mm. is, this is vigilante justice. Mm. 
Hmm. I mean, where are we going? I mean, where is this outrage? In fact, you should feel more outraged about that than what's happening to us. At least we hmm. are political animals and we are fighting this battle. Where, where is the wherewithal for them to fight it? And there are so many journalists, so many social activists whose stories you're not really highlighting. Because and, and they are languishing in jail because the, the process of even getting bail is so complicated and mm. so time drawn. So, unless there is a awakening within India, I mean, among society to say that this is not the kind of toxic society we should be in. This is not the kind of society where the organs of the state are used to, to quell dissent or a different voice. Uh, nothing is going to change. And, mm. and the institutions which are supposed to protect are... I'm sorry to say some have been captured and some have collapsed. And but until don't you think the opposition plays an important role in this, Karthi? Because it is the job of the Congress party and other opposition parties, but the Congress is the principal opposition, so it is the job of the Congress party to put up a good fight against this. To, to I mean, the show of strength that you guys had for Rahul Gandhi today, why is the party not out on the streets more for other leaders, for other issues? Jeez. You know, one Hathras or one, uh, you know, Satyagraha Yatra is, is not enough. I mean, you would surely See, agree. This is not the time or the space to talk about what the tactics or the strategies the Congress party should do. I mean, I obviously, I'm of the firm belief the Congress party should do more. But whether it is only protests or whether it is better election management, whether it is giving a narrative to the country, whether it is giving it to, uh, you know, countering the Hindutva agenda which the BJP is propagating, that's a, a completely different com um, conversation. And obviously, the Congress has to do more. Our electoral results are definitely not very encouraging. Hmm. So, we can't say that we're doing everything we can do. But hmm. just highlighting this, this harassment we face alone is not necessarily going to turn our electoral fortune. I think today in India, you like it or not, there seems to be a consolidation behind this Hindutva narrative. And we should give a, a counter narrative, which is more powerful and more appealing to uh, other people. And this Hindutva narrative only consolidates about 35% of the population. There is 65% of the population is not buying into this narrative. But we are unable to consolidate 35 plus 1% on yeah. the other side. And if you're able to do that, we will have electoral victory. And mm. unless there is a, 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 a change in the style and tenor of the politics in this country by, by bringing in another formation to form government, I don't see this toxicity ending. So tell me something. Um, these CBI cases, ED cases, you know, cases in general against politicians, how does electorally, politically, how has it affected you? And generally, how would it affect a party or a politician? that these cases are, I mean, in your understanding, because you have, uh, I mean, you did fight one election after after the first case and you won, you're in parliament. So, um, I how don't does think this matters at all. This is, this is a more of a, perhaps a topic of conversation among uh, certain sections of society, which, which don't necessarily come out to vote or are, are engaged in political activism in a great mm -hmm. level. From a constituency point of view, people mm -hmm. see through it. They see through this as uh, as as a as political harassment and victimization, and so it actually has, in my opinion, really no electoral impact. It, the only uh, reason why the BJP does it is to sort of distract you from doing politics as usual on a daily basis. So to, to sort of tie you up in knots, sort of to you don't doesn't free your time to do actual political work or mm -hmm. actual politicking. So that's all it does. It just sort mm -hmm. of eats away into your time, but it does not really. Um, you know, affect you electorally. Uh, I mean, at least the elections I've been involved in in Tamil Nadu, uh, it's really um, alliances, political parties, symbols which really win elections. Mm. I mean, ca candidates are, uh, in my opinion, only election managers to keep the show going for 30 days um, during the campaign. So candidates really don't matter, and and these kind of cases against the candidates also don't really uh, you know impede a candidate in a great way. Mm. Uh, just a few more questions for you, Karthi. Uh, firstly, this this you know, when you say that all our institutions and, you know, um, the Congress party has called the CBI a cage parrot earlier, like uh, the judiciary also, I mean, there are certain decisions that the party has spoken against. So when you say that institutions are being taken over by a certain political party or by the government, for the democracy, for Indian democracy and for the space that the opposition is supposed to occupy, what does that mean? See, what it means is that the independence and professionalism of these institutions which are supposed to be completely neutral and apolitical is eroding and was, or has eroded rather rapidly. I mean, there are not many officers today in any of these investigating agencies who have the courage to write and file saying there's 
nothing to investigate this no. this is this is a no, this case has nothing to stand on uh, they would just in order to please their political masters would say yes there is something there i will continue to investigate no. i'm not saying that the officers have an agenda by themselves on a personal level but they no. but they do not the, the system doesn't allow them to stand up and take to, to take a position and that kind of of independence that kind of um, f- you know backbone has has gone and that's that's gone not necessarily only in the bureaucracy but in other organs of uh, of society and in, in the media itself the media itself every time somebody is called to the cbi the, the headline is so and so is being grilled i mean i mean there's not there's not really any innovation in the headline now. i mean i've been looking at the <laughs> so there's since, no grilling like yeah, for i mean mr rahul gandhi for everybody thing. out I mean, there in the media there's no grilling yeah telecast the the the, the Quote, uh, unquote, the examination of Mr. Rahul Gandhi. You would see how absurd it would be, and what what kind of of basic questions would have been asked. But but of course, the headline is he's been there for X number of hours, and so mm. it's been grilled. I mean, it's and I've gone through this process m- many many times, and there's hardly anything there. So so and, and the perception is worse than the reality. But but the perception is very time consuming and is reputation damaging. Okay, so Kast, uh, Karthi, last few questions for you. Um, how long do you think you can keep doing this? Because of course, there is a physical and a mental toll. It's your job as a politician not to show it. But I think everyone has a tipping point, and there's only so much that you can do. So, I don't think it's ending at all. Much? As a former Prime Minister Narasimha Rao famously said, when Lakhubai Patak made an absurd allegation against him, is that the petitioner will die the respondent will die the prosecutor will die the defense lawyer will die and the judge will die but the case will go on forever mm-hmm. so i really don't see these ending i mean uh, unless there is a um, complete awakening by the institutions which need to put an end to this kind of harassment this process will keep going on i mean um, in- investigations will continue uh, proceedings in courts will continue there will be no finality i i honestly don't see it ending in any conceivable future okay so since we started this interview with me saying that you are the resident expert of the ed and cbi and the congress party if i don't know if he has asked you but if rahul gandhi were to ask you for advice or if mrs gandhi were to ask you for advice three things that you would tell them on how to face the cbi no, and no, the ed they are very seasoned politicians i think you you underestimate their uh, resilience and their talent they have uh, mrs gandhi particularly has a scene politics up close for more than no but still years. if you had to like tell them uh, how to i mean as i don't think i'm i they really need my advice but it's just to be patient about it i think uh, um, i think that's the the, the 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 system of the summons is only to tire you physically and to ask you uh, questions which which might uh, you know irk you a little bit just to be patient about the whole thing and to uh, and it's, it's 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 you have to consider this to be Uh, a test match, and you have to bat like uh, Rahul Dravid. And would you also suggest that they take a gift for the investigating <laughs> officer? I mean, if they're being called often enough as me, they would they would also know the investigating <laughs> officer often enough, and they probably want to give him a gift. And what are you going to take next time you? I don't know. It depends on where I'm going. I mean, I I have this habit of bringing a postcard from every place. I'll bring another souvenir wherever whenever they let me go to another country. I'll bring back another souvenir from them. Maybe if they let me go to Wimbledon this time, I'll bring a can of tennis balls. <laughs> All right thank you so much for speaking yeah. to us Karthi it was great right. fun